Hello, my dear friends. I am Patrick God. Yes, it really is my last name. Please don't ask any more in the comments. And today I wanted to build a little chat application with the help of chat GPT. Long time, no GPT content. So maybe this is a good time to do that again. I want to create a chat just asking GPT-4 with .NET, .NET 7 actually, actually a .NET 7 web API, but you will see what uh, the re result was then in the actual tutorial. And then also a signal R of course for the WebSocket connection and then Blazor WebAssembly. Let's just have a look. But first, as always guys, if you like this tutorial, maybe even learn something, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for doing that. It does make a difference. Thank you, thank you so much. And maybe you wanna get these videos here in your inbox. And in that case, the newsletter might be something interesting for you, especially because you not only get the videos, but also discounts to courses like the .NET Web Academy, which is open for enrollment very soon. So please check that stuff out if you want to. Thank you very much. And now let's start with the actual tutorial. Now the first thing we can already see here is that my prompt was maybe not the best. I only told GPT to create a chat application with .NET, not .NET 7, and certainly not a .NET Web API, but this is actually what I want to use. But SignalR and Blazor WebAssembly, I think this is clear. So what GPT does, is now giving a high level overview that's pretty much every time the same. It's telling us that it can give us an overview, but not the fully, or it cannot fully provide uh, the, the code for everything we need for a comprehensive chat application, but that's totally fine. We can ask GPT anytime to give us the code for, well, other files or more features. Now, the first suggestion here is to create a Blazor WebAssembly application and then an additional application for the server-side app with SignalR. Now, since we know a little bit of that stuff, hopefully we can change that, of course, right? So you see GPT here is a great tool, great help, but still we cannot always do it the, in the same steps that GPT suggests here. Anyways, what I want to do is create a Blazor WebAssembly application, ASP.NET Core hosted. So let's do that first. All right. So here's Visual Studio. Again, Blazor WebAssembly app is what I want. Let's give this a great name like GPT for Blazor Signal R Chat. Yes, this is a great name. ASP.NET Core hosted again, .NET 7 it is. This is perfect. And when Visual Studio is creating this application, we move on here. And the first thing really is the server side app. And this looks pretty good. In my opinion, we need a chat hub. And in this hub, then it inherits from the signal R hub. Then uh, we create or add the send message method. Tongue twister here, send message method. But uh, let's just do that. And what I also want to do is create a folder for that. GPT is not suggesting this, suggesting this, but uh, still, let's do that. So right click the server project and here we create a new folder. And if my machine wants, yep, now it's there. This thing is called hubs. And then we create a new item called chat hub. All right, and now this thing, uh, yep, let's save this again, inherits from hub. And with control and period, we see the suggestion here to use Microsoft ASP.NET Core Signal R. So again, that same stuff that is uh, GPT telling us here at the using uh, statement here, the reference. So it's not necessary to add a new get package, for instance. I assumed this would be necessary, but as you can see, it's not. Now, the next thing is, as pretty much always, GPT is still working with the startup CS file. The knowledge of GPT-4 is still cut off in September 2021. Although it knows .NET 6, it still, well, works with the startup CS. We can every time ask GPT then to use a program CS, and I actually did this at the bottom here. Where is it? Yep. I'm actually using .NET 7, little typo here. Okay, we haven't seen that. So typically I've only got a program CS and not a startup CS file. What should I do? And then GPT says, well, no problem. Here the hubs remains the same. And uh, then here we've got the program CS file and we only have to add the this line here. 
but I think still there is one thing missing. Let me go up first. Here, for instance, we also have to add the signal our service, right? So let's do that. And then also add the map hub. So now, wait a sec. First, this method here. So a lot of copy pasting today. Simply doing that. And after that, and then we are already done with the server, is here this little line, adapted a little, so it would be builder, and then services, builder it is, services with a capital S, add signal R, add signal R services to the specified I service collection. Great. And then again, the map hub stuff here, we have no endpoints. So here now we just say app and then map hub chat hub. Now what is going on here? Well, we've seen that already services of signal R, we register that stuff. And with that thing maps incoming requests with the specified path to the specified hub type. So meaning that in the client application you create in a minute, then we will create a connection to this path here chat hub, right. And here in the in the server application, we're telling our web API in essence, that with that path, we want to use this chat hub here. And then in this chat hub, we only have this one method here so far. And what this thing then is doing? Well, it receives two strings, a user and a message, and then it will broadcast to all connected clients, another message with the title receive message, and then also the data, the username again, and the message and we will see what's going on then on the client again in a minute. But as you can see here, the explanation of the tooltip is invokes a method on the connections, meaning all the users or clients represented by the iClient proxy instance does not wait for a response from the receiver. Okay, nice. So now you know, and that's our message here. And then again, uh, the name of this method here is also important. So send message, we need this information on the client, but why you will see that in a sec again. Then since GPT is suggesting to create two different applications, a separate, ser uh, a separate server app and a separate client application, it already covers cores here, which is really nice, right? So uh, cross origin resource sharing, this could be an issue if the uh, URL is not the same for both. So here, we could configure our uh, server application to accept simply uh, this origin here, localhost 5000. Again, we have to uh, check this because if you're running it with Visual Studio, then the port is pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not that one. If we use the CLI, could be different, but we allow any method, any header and any credentials. But again, this is not something I want to cover here. The next step is really the client application. And here now we need a new get package and that would be Microsoft ASP.NET Core Signal R client. We can again use the uh, CLI or the package manager console or we do it old school. Is it old school? Well, it's just using the mouse, right? Not typing. So here we just uh, right click the client application, manage new get packages, then we go to browse. And then here signal our client, there it is. And that's the one 34 million downloads great client for ASP.NET Core signal R. So let's install this thing. Currently version 7.0.9. And when this thing is installed, we should create a new razor component on the client. And I would say again, we just copy that stuff. And then let's just see if this works. It's a page called chat. So let me copy the code and then create a page. So now here in the pages folder, we again create the chat dot razor component. And again, just paste everything here. And then let's just see if this already works. We get some warnings here. But again, let's just have a look at the codes after checking out the application, trying to start this. And there we are, of course, we need access to the chat page. Beautiful, we've got two input controls, input fields and a send button. So let's just say we've got Joel here saying, hi, 
cannot hit enter, so let's just click send. Great, but now we actually want more users, right? So let's create another tab and move that to the side. There we are, and when we now hit send, great, we already see here the same result. And what if we now enter LE? Also saying hello, for instance, this works as well. Isn't that great? It already works and we are maybe 10 minutes in. So in just 10 minutes, we can already create a chat application, not the most beautiful one, of course, but it does work. Now let's have a look at the code. Real quick, a short reminder, the .NET Web Academy is opening again very, very soon. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description below. We will cover everything regarding building web applications with the .NET Web API, Entity Framework, Blazor WebAssembly, Azure, Git, what not please check out the link in the video description if you're interested there you can already sign up for the waiting list again opening very soon i'm looking forward to see you there again it starts with two input fields and a button right this is no edit form where we can uh, just hit return and have a submit button and then uh, use the 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 on hand uh, on valid submit event for instance so simple stuff but it still works of course we can improve this of course and if you want me to improve this and make this a uh, well better greater better looking chat application i've got one video already with dotnet 6 check it out here please the info card but uh, of course we can do more for instance also with tailwind css would be an interesting project actually so maybe Blazor, Tailwind, and Signal are interesting stuff. Tell me in the comments, please. Anyways, we've got the input fields. Again, we've got the page. We are also using uh, this namespace here, the, the client, Signal R client package, and the navigation manager. But let's just have a look at, uh, at the other lines. Then here we've got a list, an unordered list for all our messages. And here we can see our messages. So this is really a a list of strings and here these two strings again user input and message input so this is what we really enter and then send to the client to the server with the send method maybe we can have a look at this method here first and that's then what you see we've got a hub connection in that case it should already be uh, created we send use the method send async this comes from the hub connection so from signal r and now i already told you that the send message term is important. You see it here, the method name. So the send message method name, well, what will this thing do? It will call the send message method then and use the user input and the message input as data. Let's have a quick look again here. See that send message. So with that, the hub then knows that it should call the send message method. If the name would be send message to or anything else, then this would not work. All right, and then the hub connection. So we've got the hub connection here. Again, signal our stuff. And here in the on initialized async, which is, I think maybe you know this already, this is a lifecycle method of Blazor. We've pretty much got three important lifecycle methods. I know there are more, please be gentle in the comments, but the most important ones really are on initialized async, on parameters set, and then also on after render. And this is then the very first thing that will be called when the component is ready. See it here, method invoked when the component is ready to start, having received its initial parameters from its parent in the render tree. Overwrite this method. If you will perform an asynchronous operation, and want to, the component to refresh when that operation is completed. So let's just say component is here, we call the uninitialized, and the first thing we do is we create our hub connection. See it here, a new instance of the hub connection builder. And now here we see the URL, and that's why we need the navigation manager. We turn this into an absolute URI, and you now chat up. And you've seen that already in the program CS, right? So here we kind of register this chat hub, and here then in the client, we are saying we want to use this chat hub. So we really need this same URI. And then we build this thing. And after that, we create something like a listener with the on method. 
Here it says it re registers a handler that will be invoked when the hub method with the specified method name is invoked. So again, something with the web method name. And as you can see here, receive message. You've seen that already, right? Again, in the chat hub, we've got this thing here. So it's just the other way around. We send this to all the clients. The method name is receive mess message. And then in uh, our client here, we say we actually uh, expect data to strings, right? When we receive the method name receive message from the signal or hub. And then what we do is we get the data here. We, okay, GPT called this encoded message. Yeah, well, it's just formatted a bit differently maybe. So then we just display or store the username and the message in encoded message. Then we've got our list here, right? The messages simply add this thing. And then this is interesting, state has changed. Tells you here, it notifies the component that its state has changed. And when applicable, this will cause the component to re-render, to be re-rendered. This, in essence, this just means that the data will already be there after this call here, messages add. So the, there will be more messages, but they won't be displayed right away in our chat application here on our page. So to do that, we have to also call state has changed with that. We tell our component or our page in this case that there is something different now, please re-render yourself. And then you see all the messages again. Great stuff, right? And in the end, we just start our hub connection. And what I don't get is why is there a bool, a bool is connected. I can only assume, if you can see it here, uh, it says when the hub connection state is connected and maybe, I don't know, somewhere in the interwebs, there is a, a code snippet where it wanted to use something like that. So is connected and only if we really are connected, then please display that maybe. And otherwise we could do something like span and then connecting something like that maybe. So let's, oops, let's just have a look, save this. Uh, restart the application manually because I'm not the biggest friend of uh, the the hot reload actually to be really honest and with it, see that it's really just under a second just a millisecond maybe you see connecting 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 right so with that we can really just check if we are connected and in that case then we display the messages but maybe we can also actually put this here, right? Because why would you want to see the controls when we are not connected to the chat? Yeah. Nice. Connecting. All right. And that's it already. I really hope you learned something. And if so, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. It really does make a difference. And if you are really still watching, thank you very much first, but I also got some exciting news to share. Our little one is on the way. So really baby number two, any day now actually, because it is a bit overdue. So life's getting a bit hectic currently with a toddler already running around the day job, this YouTube channel, the .NET Web Academy, and of course, all the baby stuff. But if you love what I do and want to give a hand, I've got a Patreon page set up or I will have by the time you're watching this. It is a great place where you'll gain access to all the source codes from my videos, exclusive behind the scenes content and much more. You will find the link in the video description. So if you want to support me, I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you check out the page. Your support really makes all the difference to me, guys. Seriously, it's amazing and I can't thank you enough. I love every single one of you. So if you want, please check out the link in the video description. Thank you so much. And now I can just say I hope I see you in the next video. Take care.